we are now going to do something very exciting. We're going to be writing a bunch of tests that are going to test out the functionality of our application. Now, if we go over here, some of the functionality that we'll be testing is, hey, if I type into the input, the value should change. Also, if I type into the input and then press add, I should see that to do rendered in the to do list. Now, if I click on that particular to do, I should see the styles changed. Now, thus far, all we've really learned is how to get elements. But this will require us to not only get the elements, but also interact with the elements. So yeah, we might know how to get this input element, but how do we type into it? We might be able to get this add element, but or this button element, but how do we click it? And that is exactly going to be the focus of this video, how we can interact with the elements that we get. So let's actually go ahead and let's just simply test this component right here. So this, uh, this input component, and this is going to be a unit test because we are only testing this component. So let's go ahead and let's just get rid of all of these tests and let's just copy this test template because I don't want to copy, I don't want to write this down. So let's just close this out and then let's go to our add input element. So over here, it's a very simple uh, add input element. Over here, we have set to do's, and this is where all of our to do's are. We get that from the parent, and the parent is in here in the to do's. So you can see here that we have set to do's, which is initially set as an array, and we pass that to the add input element. And over here, we have the to do's. All right, so now over here, we get uh, we get the set to do's and over here we get the uh, to do's from the parent through the props and here we have another state and this is just the to do and set to do and this is really just the uh, the value of the input so over here you can see that when we change the input we're also changing the set to do and also over here, I, I did uh, a doubly binding where the, the value is also equal to the to-do state. Now, if we go ahead and we uh, type into it and we press the add button, then we call this function, the add to-do function. So essentially all this is doing is, uh, is, is setting up the updated to-do. So it's getting all of the to-dos and then it's adding this to-do within it. And this is an array. So we're just destructuring all of the to-dos in the initial array and we're adding this one. And then over here, we're just setting the to-dos inside of, of the to-do component to the updated to do's and then we are setting the set to do which is the input back to empty an empty string so this is just a very simple component i do expect you to understand what's going on here and let's just go ahead and test it now what's great about this is it's more complicated than the ones that we've been doing thus far and so we're going to be doing quite a bit the tests are going to be more logical and a little bit more complex so in here let's create a underscore underscore test underscore underscore and then let's add a add input dot test dot js. All right, and let's just go ahead and just copy these this test in, and let's just do a little bit of changing. Here we're testing the add input, right? Testing that the add input component, and over here add input, and over here we'll just change the describe block to add input. And now what we want to do is, uh, well, we want to test this component, the add input component. All right, so let me just uh, change the describe block. So what are we testing here? What is the first thing that we want to test? Well, let's actually just test that if we type something in the input, the value of the input should change. So that is the first thing that I want to test. Now, first of all, let's just get that input. So let's just get that input. So let's just say, hey, we're going to test that our, our application renders that input. So should render input element. This is our test. So how are we going to get that uh, input element? Well, we can get that input element by 
placeholder text. And the placeholder text is going to be, so if I remove the actual text, it's going to be add a new task here. So we can do a regular expression or a string if we want to. I'm going to do a regular expression. And then in here, I'm going to say add a new task here. And then dot, dot, dot. And this is going to be an input element. And then over here, this is also going to be an input element. Now the component, the component is obviously the add input component. So let's, let's, let's just change that right now. So let's go here and let's say add input and then the add input component. Now here is something interesting. This add input component, well, it takes in two props. It takes in the to do's props and then it takes in the set to do's props. Now the to do's is very easy. That's just going to be an array. So what we can do is very easily say that, hey, the to do's we'll just say is an array. So is an array. Now over here, now we have the set to do's prop, which is a hook. So over here, if we go back to set to do's, you can see that this is a function that is going to change the array. Now in here, we're just testing the add input and we really don't care about what happens in this uh, component. We really don't care. This is not an integration test. We're only testing this component. So we really don't care what this function does, what this set to do function does. So what we can do is set to do's and we can just set this to an empty object. And that is completely valid. But a better approach is to just mock this object. So we can do that by doing const mocked set to do, which is just a object. And we can say jest, which is the uh, testing library that we're using on top or on top of React testing library, or we're using React testing library on top of jest, but we're ultimately using jest. And then we can just say jest.function. And this is just going to be a mock function that does nothing really, but we can use this function over here as the thing that we pass into set to do's. Okay, so now if we go ahead and we save this, should pass and it does pass. All right, cool. So that is the first thing. And now let's start interacting with it. So when I start typing things, I should see the value change. So let's write a test for this. Let's just copy the, the test block and then let's paste that in there and let's just change the uh, change the uh, description. So I'm going to say should be able to type into input. So for this test, we should test that we are able to type into this input and the value of this input changes accordingly. Now over here, of course, we rendered our component, which is good. Then we got our element. But now what we want to do is to fire an event. We want to trigger an event and especially we want to trigger in this case, the type event. Now, how do we do that? Well, we do that through the fire event function that we get from at react testing library. So what we can do here now is say below the input element that we have gotten, we can do fire event and then we can do fire event dot and then over here, you can see all of the events that we can call. So over here, we can have a change event, a click event, a blur event. You might have yeah, a copy event, a cut event, a drag event. And again, I'm not going to cover every single one. I'm just going to co cover the most common ones. And then later on, you can use the other ones as need be. But you can see there's so many events, mouse over, mouse leave pace events, play events. So you can really test anything it is that you want. But what we want to do is we want a type event. Now there is no type event here. So instead what we're going to use is the change event because what we want to do is we want to change the value of that input. So now what we can do is say change. And then over here, you can see that this is going to expect two parameters. The first parameter is the input element that we want to change. So whatever the element it is that we want to fire this change event with, 
Well, that is going to be the input element that we have found in line 25. And then the second is, the second parameter is going to be what we are going to change by. So this is just a bunch of options. So we're going to say that we want to change the, we want to change the target and then we want to change the target value to, and then let's just say go grocery shopping. So go grocery shopping. So once we trigger this event, so once we trigger this event over here, what we can assert is that the input element dot value is going to be go grocery shopping. So now if I were to save this, this should pass and it does, I hope. <laughs> let's see, and it does, awesome. All right, so now let's start looking at some other things that we can test. So we tested that we should be able to type into it. Now let's test that once we click this button, so once we click this button, so once we type and then click this button, the value of the input element goes back to nothing. Okay, so now what we can do is just go ahead and copy this and let's give this a name of should have empty input when add button is clicked. And I believe I misspelled button here. No, I didn't. Yeah, I actually did. Yes, button. So Okay, so now what we have to do is we have to, of course, render our component. We have to get the input element. We have to, well, trigger a change. And now what we have to do is get the add button. So how are we going to get this? Well, let's get this by role. So we're gonna get it by the button role. So over here, what we can do is we can also const button element. And this is going to be screen dot get by role and we can say button because we only have one button but we can also specify the text inside it by saying name and then um, we'll just say add in regular expressions and so like this all right cool so this should get the add a button and now what we can do is we can fire an event so we can say okay after the change event let's just go ahead and let's fire a click event and then in here, we're just going to pass the element that we want to click, that is the button element. And then once we click it, we're going to assert that the input value is empty. So now we can save this. And that's it, we're done. That's, that's absolutely correct and that works. So that is how we can actually trigger events using React testing library. Now, in the next section, we're going to be working with more trigger events tests, but now we're going to be doing more of integration tests.